Here now with more, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, Fox & Friend Weekend's co-host, Will Kane, and Fox News contributor, Miranda Devine. All right, I'll start with you, Congressman uh, uh, Donalds. You know, James Carville was probably right when he said that Kamala Harris has to really answer for her left uh, messaging and everything that she said. And he basically said that preachy females were to blame for the messaging problem. Has Kamala uh, taken away those concerns that Carville had? No, she hasn't, Judge. If anything, looking at that first clip, she's only amplified them. They had the campaigns having staffers leak out to the press saying that she was changing all these positions. Then when she's finally asked about it, after 40 days of being able, having been able to sit in the back and craft an answer, she comes out with that her values have not changed. This is not good for the Harris campaign because, number one, the imagery was, did not look good. She did not look strong. Mm -hmm. She did not look like the mantle of a president. And then, number two, she backtracks on all of the leaks that her campaign was using to backtrack off of her radical, progressive, liberal agenda. It did not go well. I'm assured, I'm pretty sure that the rest of this interview did not go well, but we'll see. But the bigger issue is Kamala Harris has hidden from the press because she cannot actually go toe to toe with reporters and the American people to question and go through her record. It is a radical record. It is a bad record for the American people. I think you're seeing the beginning of the end for this campaign. And, and you know, Will Kane. Uh, the whole idea that she is a candidate for change, according to Ben Stiller, is stunning to me because there's no change. She's been in the White House for three years and nine months. What, what is wrong with these people? There's, there's a change in the vibes, Judge. There's oh. a change in the top of the totem pole. There's a new totem. But underneath that totem, for the rest of the totem pole, is the same policies. Like Newt Gingrich and the congressman, I actually find it very notable, important, Judge, that she said her values have not changed. I think a very worthy follow-up would be, could you please explain? Indeed. Would you articulate your values? Because we could explain and we could show a montage right now, Judge, of her saying, for example, that we need to fight for equity. When she explains equity, she says not everybody starts at the same place, but everybody should end up at the same place. And in order to do so, some should get more than others. Well, that not, might not be an exact repetition, but it's pretty rhythmic with the popular Marxist saying of from each according to his ability to each according to his need. It sounds to me like she is doubling down on values that are overtly Marxist. They are overtly Marxist, Miranda Devine. I mean, when they talk about, and even Walls, brothers and sisters, and, and you know, the, the Marxism, we look forward, we never look back. I mean, it's almost like, you know, pre-World War II. Yes, it is, Judge. And look, the entire way that they're running her campaign is very communistic. It's very top-down control and a lot of brainwashing and lying and uh, pretending that there's joy out there when really the news that's filtering through from Harris campaign headquarters is that it's just full of confusion. There's competing priorities. You have... Um, you know, people from her old loyalists from her disastrous 2019 campaign. You've got the old Biden campaign loyalists who she kept on. Uh, and then you've got this new Obama team coming in, uh, the old Obama 2012 crew like David Plouffe. And they're not meshing together. They all have completely different priorities. And the real problem is that you have a candidate who cannot make up her mind. She is insecure and indecisive. And, you know, it took her 40 days to figure out which sycophantic media outlet she was going to give this pre-recorded 18 minute interview. I'm sure it'll be her only one of the campaign. And even then she had to have her wingman, as you call him, emotional support uh, partner, <laughs> Tim Walls by her side. And as Byron said, the optics were just shocking. She was dwarfed yeah. by them. Yeah. I think she was looking for the CEO in command look, but it didn't work. No, not at all. Not at all. And, and, and Congressman Donalds, I'll go back to you. You know, it's not just the Obama campaign, the Biden campaign, the Harris campaign, or people like 92 percent of the people who worked in her office left. But you've also got Mark Elias from the Steele dossier uh, days. And, you know, it's almost as though her campaign is reflecting in, in terms of it being chaotic and disorderly the candidate herself as a person who is not being asked follow-ups and is not clear on what she believes in. Judge, what we are witnessing is what happens when you have a machine candidate, somebody yeah. that is picked by the Democratic machine, yeah. every aspect of that machine wants to have their hands in this campaign. And to Miranda's point, 
It doesn't look like she has the confidence within herself mm -hmm. or the ability to take charge, charge and lead this campaign. If she can't do that, how is she going to lead the United States of America? Contrast that with Donald J. Trump. Judge, I can assure you, he's <laughs> in charge of that campaign. Everybody has their job, but the buck stops with him. He makes the decisions and they move forward. But that's why we were so successful as a country, because he is take charge. He is a leader. This interview already is demonstrating that she is not. I mean, Dana Bash might be five feet tall and she looked bigger than Kamala Harris tonight. Yeah, she looked much bigger. And, you know, Will, I'll go to you. Uh, I think there's something like 67 days. It took her 40 days. It's like she's in the desert for 40 days, wringing her hands, trying to figure out, oh, my gosh, who should I have do the interview? And I'll bring my wingman with me and there won't be enough time and we can edit it. Nobody's talking. We haven't seen the edits yet. But um, is there enough time to overcome this joy and lunacy of a change? So much pressure is going to come down to that debate because I don't have much faith at all that the press will be able to pull her out of that manufactured AI candidate stage managed version of Kamala Harris, the real version that we saw windows of, glimpses of for the last four years. Somebody that does not think on their feet and does not have depth when it comes to the issues. So if I can't count on the press to give us that authenticity, the only real opportunity does come down to that debate for Donald Trump. And mm -hmm. hopefully we're not we're not limited to one debate, but that's the best chance to see the real Kamala. And, you know, Miranda, you talked uh, yesterday, you were speaking about Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg has made the decision that he's not going to give 400 million in Zuckerbucks uh, bucks, and, you know, he's not going to be subject to any kind of intimidation like the intimidation from the Biden-Harris campaign. What do you think that signals in terms of this election? I think it shows that Zuckerberg is seeing what side of the road he needs to be on and he suspects that Donald Trump is going to win the next election and he knows that he's in bad odour with Donald Trump and his supporters because of what he did to help rig the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's too little too late. He's very disingenuous, but I guess it's a good sign. At least uh, the, the powerful censor uh, sens you know, sensorial people uh, from the 2020 election uh, are losing power because if you've got someone like Mark Zuckerberg joining forces with Elon Musk, or at least uh, trying to get on that side of the post, mm -hmm. you know that Donald Trump is ascendant. OK, and Congressman Donalds, very quickly, uh, you know, Kamala Harris right now is riding this joy balloon. At some point, it's got to it's got to start leaking. I mean, you know, there are leaks coming out of the campaign. But how long will she be able to withstand the kind of pressure that she's going to be under? Not so much from the press, but in terms of the campaign itself. Uh, not much longer because the demands and the expectations are only going to rise. As we watch this full interview, if this thing doesn't go well, there's going to be calls for her to step out and do more. The debate, all the pressures on Kamala Harris, not Donald Trump. We know who Donald Trump is and what he's going to do. She has to demonstrate the stature, the competency, and then the ideas to be president of the United States. So I think you're going to see more out of this campaign as things trend downwards for Kamala Harris. And quickly, Will Kane, you know, it's kind of tight right now. What do you think is going on? I, I can't explain to the American public embracing Kamala Harris. I truly cannot. Um, I think that it is just this. I really cannot judge. I don't understand how you could accept what is a D-level candidate as the potential president of the United States. But the answer will go back. Honestly, it was going to go back to that clip you played of Ben Stiller. It's going to be an American public that rides along the wave of the news, doesn't dig deep, doesn't care about understanding Kamala Harris, but just rides the vibes. Yeah. And Miranda, do you think that in Pennsylvania, when she says, you know, you know, she, she hasn't talked about fracking. She hasn't talked about explaining a, a way unless, you know, it's in this 18 minute interview. Like, why did you change your mind? I'm happy your values are the same, but your values are not the values of the people in Pennsylvania, a state that you need to win. Does she just rely on the surrogates to say it or will she just run an ad and say, you know, we need to frack in Pennsylvania? Well, I don't think we can rely, as uh, we've just been saying and Will just mentioned, on the media to actually hold her feet to the fire. So, um, But I do have faith in the American people that um, if this is a fair, fair vote, um, that they will see through Kamala Harris. I think the fakery that is uh, her intrinsic quality is going to be more and more evident, and just like it was in 2019 when everything fell apart. All right. Congressman Donalds, Miranda Devine and Will Kane. Good to see you all. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.